why. They get a lot of misinformation. They get told a lot of stuff. All right. So one of the um one uh, one of the, the reasons why that they have so so many problems is because um because of a post that I put up the other day. This is a post that Sierra uh, is getting a lot of flack for. So apparently Sierra posted this video clip. I posted the video clip on my page the other day, but I broke it down about how bullshit the the the, pe the preacher's message was, right? Well, apparently Sierra had posted this with a caption that says something about, you know, how she was uh, a single mom and was down and feeling down and decided that she needs to level up and that's how she became a wife or whatnot. And so she put like hashtag level up. And so women are really, a lot of women are really pissed at Sierra for saying level up. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, offend, they're offended by that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but going from being a baby's mama to a girlfriend, to a fiance, to a wife, I'd call that leveling up. Is that an inaccurate perception or am I interpreting that wrong? Going from being a, a, a single baby mama to being a, a married woman with, with a husband, that sounds like you went, went up a couple of levels. So I don't understand why there would be any flack from that. I don't understand. That was not a, a, a shot, taking a shot at anybody. That's not disrespecting anybody. That sounds like an accurate statement to me. But if anybody can relate to being attacked for making true statements, it's me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I get it. I know how women on social media respond. Right? So now in the post, this, this pastor is talking about the, the scripture that says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And this is, this is where... Like I, I talk uh, about people that wrap relationship advice in religion and how I think it's really, really ineffective. Um, anybody, when, when you're talking about relationships, you're talking about two imperfect people and how they interact and, and, and respond to one another. So when you include God around it, who's supposed to be perfect and, and all knowing, it distorts what really happens between the, the individuals. Because neither one of them are perfect, right? And so, so these messages that are blamed on God, wrapped in religion, uh, etc., don't really help women. They're more motivational speeches. They they get standing ovations. They get them to clap. They get them to feel good. They get them to leave on a positive note. But when they when they get back to their interactions with men, they still have the same exact thoughts, the same exact feelings, the same exact behavior. They exhibit the exact same behavior I'm posting about, right? So what he did was in his, in his speech that looks like relationship advice, he, he used that scripture about um, a man finding a good, good uh, a man who finds a wife is a good thing. And then he says, this is what the Bible says. God said, he who finds a wife, he didn't say man who finds a single woman and starts hanging out with her and starts dating her and gets engaged with her and then marries her. Right. He, he used the word trick. He used the word play. The Bible said this and it didn't say this. Well, let's women. Women are already want to listen, want to hear these type of things. So they're already they all in. They, they eyes is wide in. They all in on it. And then he hits him with the finish move, the, the uppercut, right? So he says that God said that he, when he finds a wife, not when he finds a single woman that he dates and then he marries. And then I, I, I type this in my notes. It says, then he said, this was his, his, his magic line. You're not a wife when I marry you. You're a wife when I find you. Then he paused, let the crowd, let the crowd go wild like he knew they was going to do. Right? Y'all can go watch it for yourself. And then he said, you become my wife when I, he said, you become my wife when I marry you. Now, let me break down this pastor's punchline, right? You're not a wife when I marry you. 
You're a wife when I find you. That is 100% bullshit, y'all. A woman is not a wife until she is legally married. Until she finishes the ceremony and, and sign and have witnesses and have everything that officially make her a wife. So, so to, to tell them the message that you're a wife when I meet you is bullshit. That's complete bullshit. But it's wrapped in religion, so nobody's going to reject, object to it. It sounds good. The timing of it is perfect. Look at it in real life. Look at how the crowd responds to it. Right? That's not factual, though. You're not, just because a man walks up to you and Tell you you a wife. You if you ain't married, you know damn well you're not a wife. That's not that's 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 factual. You can take two women and stand stand them next to, to one another. If one has been legally married and has been through the ceremony, she's a wife, she's not. That's not dissing her, that's not downing her, that's not saying anything negative about her, that's being factually accurate about your statement. About your standing, your legal standing. You're either single or you're married. You can't say I'm a husband before I get married. That's bullshit. Right? And so, so when, when he does this, the crowd goes wild. The women go into it and, and it completely distorts their perspective on what it means to be a wife and, and, and date, etc. Right? Now, when we're talking about what a man considers wife material, that's an individual decision. Because uh, each individual man gets to decide who he's going to propose to. And so if a man decides that you meet the standards or the criteria for him to marry, he can make you his wife. Right? He didn't know that when he walked up on you and asked you for your number. He didn't see you across the room and decide that he was going to marry you. That's not how it works in real life. He thought you was cute. He noticed your outfit. He noticed your shape. He decided that he was willing to go over and talk to you to try to holler at you. But he didn't know that he was going to marry you. How in the hell could he know that? Dating is based off what you experience with a person. Because you can get on the phone with somebody the first conversation with them and they say something that make you never want to call them again. You can go on one date with somebody and they could do something that make you never go on a second date with them. True or false? Am, am I saying anything that's not real, r realistic? So the fact is dating is a fluid thing because if there's any, at any moment you could get a phone call, you could get a text, you could have an experience with somebody that completely make you stop fucking with them. Am I lying? Does that not reflect the world that we see around us? A woman can be totally in love and totally be happy with her with her, her man and get and get a video of him sucking some dude's dick and they marriage is over with instantly. Is that not reality? We see shit like this in real life. One thing could instantly destroy a relationship. So it's not something that you can just pre-plan. Oh, yep. In 24 months, we're going to be married and we're going to be on our second baby. Like how in the fuck is somebody supposed to predict that? That's why it's bullshit. That's why I don't really put much weight into the religious people that speak with religion. Because when you do that, when you say, God wants you to find a good man. and God, God has the man for you. And he just not the right one. God hasn't sent you to man. Didn't, if, if God controls all of our behavior, didn't God put every man in her life that she dealt with in the past too? Let's just be objective. If God controls who comes into your life, didn't God put her first baby daddy in her life? Didn't God put her second baby daddy in her life? Didn't God put all of her ex-boyfriends in her life? Or, or am I tripping? Am I, am I not seeing it? Is that not accurate? 
See what I'm talking about? But when you say God has the man for you, God has a perfect man for you to every woman. We know that that's not true. We know that there are women that die single. We know there are women that never get find a man that wants them. We know that there are women that have personalities and behaviors that are not conducive to having healthy relationships. So when we just tell all women, there's somebody for everybody. There's a, that's, we know it's bullshit. Like, just, let's just be real. Let's just pay attention to what we see. Like, I'm not saying anything that we don't see. There are women that, the, the cat woman with 30 cats, there are women like that. Where they ain't had sex in 20 something years. Where they haven't uh, been in, in, dated since they was young. There are women that it happens to. So, so, so when, you, when you wrap it in religion, it really distorts what happens between men and women. Because you have, you have religion comes with its own good guy and bad guy. Because everything that happens positive to a woman, you can attribute to God. God got you that job. God got you that car. God's going to send you your man too. Right? You can, you, you, it, it's perfect for motivational speeches. But anything that bad happens, you can say, the devil did it. The devil's the reason that that other guy, he left. The devil's the reason. When the real reason that he could have left could have been your attitude. Could have been your behavior. Could have been the things he experienced while dating with you. That's, those are possible too, right? But when you blame it on God or the devil, it's never the pastor's fault for giving you the bad advice. It's never the pastor's fault for giving you this motivational speech that's confusing as hell, that does not re represent reality, but gets a standing ovation. It's never his fault. He's not going to be blamed if, if you didn't learn shit or you don't benefit from his advice. It's the devil's fault. That's the difference. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't talk about the how things should be or, you know, so like these perfect utopian scenarios. I talk about what we experience between men and women. Men and women are not perfect. We make mistakes. We say shit that we didn't really mean. We, we fuck up situations we have to fix. So when you talk about these perfect scenarios, it's always bullshit. And if you have somebody intelligent like me that can just sit and break it down, you'll be able to be like, damn, you're right. A man don't really, a woman that is single is really not a wife. Can you just start calling yourself a wife just because you want to? No, you have to get married. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if that's the case, everybody's already married then, right? So, so I don't know. It just, it just seems... To me, it's so easy to see through this stuff, but go back and watch the video. Like I, I study communication. I study mass communication, talking to large numbers of people. When you see how the women respond, just listen to the crowd as he's going through his, his little speech. And I only played a minute clip. I'm pretty sure if he was talking longer than that, he could hit him with way more shit. To, man, he could have had... He could he could have talked for five more minutes and then had them go buy his books and buy his videos and buy his DVDs. That's women are easy to fool like that. That's why most companies market to women. That's why y'all are the easiest group to fool. That's why fuck boys take advantage of women. Y'all are easy to fool. You know what I'm saying? Like not to be offensive or nothing, but that's just the reality of it. In marketing, they teach you if a family's going to make a purchase, the salesman needs to cater to the wife. Because the wife is going to influence the husband. The wife is going to be the one that makes the decision for the kids. Oh, no, she can't have that. That's too dangerous. Oh, no, my son can't do that. So logically, it makes more sense to impress or please the women. That's exactly what they do. Like if you go to church, it's mostly women. It's mostly women in church. Which is why a lot of the guys at church can fuck several of them. He's coming in every week looking fly. He got on cologne. He's well groomed. He's suited and booted. That's why the dudes in 